Dr. Rob, how long have you been doing implants? Hmm, how long have I been doing implants? Well, I've got to do math now. So I have been doing implants for about 15 years. In those 15 years, how have your methods, especially like your surgical methods and what has become the implants made simple method, how has that changed over time? Dramatically. My, my methods over the last 15 years have, have dramatically changed and I don't suspect that they're going to be done. Um, and I'll, I'll come back and circle around to the end about why I say that, with, in particular with the implants made simple method. But when I started doing dental implants, um, there was a number of voids in the, in the understanding of dental implants, uh, call it the literature or the body of knowledge around dental implants that drove me crazy. I'll give you, I'll give you an example. If you go to any particular dental implant company and you look to the literature surrounding their implant, you're most likely not going to find anywhere that defines where the dental implant should be placed in the mouth. And that drove me crazy. I would go to the meetings, I'd go to the big meetings for dental implant meetings with all the greats up there speaking. And they would do this amazing lecture, the whole lecture through, and they never once said where the implant should go. And I'm back there going, is anyone else confused about where implants should go as a new guy here? I'm like, it seems like that's pretty important because the implant is the foundation for the pros. And typically you want your foundation to be rock solid, right? And, and I was so frustrated. So I didn't, hear it from the, I didn't hear it from the podium. I didn't find it in the literature. It definitely wasn't in the manufacturer's literature because they don't want to take on that responsibility. They don't want to tell you as a doctor what they think their implant should go, that's your job. And so it took me a number of number of years to finally start to come into some, some literature that started on the, on the periphery of the body of knowledge that started to talk about where to place an implant for success. And so from there, that was, that was a, huge, a huge win, okay? And then the, the implant evolution over the last, just the last 15 years, as we've changed from these external hexes to internal hexes to shallow conical seals to deep conical seals, all of these advances to the, the to uh, machine smooth outside V-threads to rough um, acid etched and sandblasted surfaces that have reverse buttress threads, uh, from micro threads around the, the, the top of your implant to, to uh, vents at the taper or taps at the taper or helical taps, uh, you know, flutes, helical flutes uh, for tapered implants, for straight implants. All of this happened in the last 10 years. I mean, it's just been going, it's been going so fast. And so you have to be on top of all of these things. You got to constantly read. There's nothing changing faster, nothing changing faster in, in dentistry than dental implants. If you want to be amazed, go to a meeting and listen to the main topic and then go to, the, go to another meeting six months later and it will be literally the opposite of what you just heard. It will be literally the complete opposite. What Six months ago, everybody was saying immediate with it. Now they're saying, no, let's do delayed. Like you just can't keep up. I mean, it's really, really challenging. And then the other thing is um, the actual practice of placing a dental implant. When I started, I wanted to do guided. I, I wanted to use a tool to help ensure that my implant would go in the right position that I wanted it to go in. And what that looked like when I started was a stone model and a drill press, okay? That's the best we could do back then was it was a type one guide, which is a visual aid. A type one guide is a visual aid. So I would do a suck down over a denture tooth. I would drill a hole. I would try to align it with the adjacent teeth using my eye as my, as my coordinate system. And I would create some sort of thermoplastic um, uh, mold over it with a collar that would give me a pilot hole. So that it would be a, with a pilot hole, there'd be a type two guide, okay? And then I would go to the mouth and I would hope for the best, right? And so don't hate on any implants placed, you know, before 10 years ago, because it was really, really hard. And you still had no depth control over those at that point, right? No, no, you, it was all eye. It was either you had to use your eye, you had to look to the platform and use the reference of the adjacent teeth, which are not square. Yeah. Adjacent teeth are round. So you're kind of like trying to, in your mind, figure out is that deep enough? Is that the right location? Nobody's telling me what the location is, and I'm trying to say, is that it? You know, what are my what are my reference points? And it was really, really challenging. That's where we started, and then we went from that. We went to type three guides, 
which were a type three guide is a, a guide that uses sleeves uh, and multiple drills, but you don't place the implant through the hole. Okay, so that that you don't place the so you would drill the hole, but then you had to take it out and place the implant through the hole. And I hated that. It was a, it was definitely an improvement from the type one and type two. But when we got to type three, uh, it wasn't there, and I kept pushing the industry. I kept calling the vendors and saying, "When are you going to come out with a type four fully guided, meaning that the dental implant goes through the guide?" Okay. And then when they finally did, it was like this angels started singing and the whole process got really, really simple. And so now we know where implants need to go. We know exactly where they need to go for, for results. We know exactly what kind of parameters we want on our implant to have the longest lasting, best, most stable implant. And we have a way to do it. So those are planning methods, right? but then you have to execute and the execution is through that guide. And by, by, by doing those things now, they became the cornerstones of Implants Made Simple. What's really neat about when I was formulating the method, the Implants Made Simple method, is it's, it's not locked down. And let me give you an example. At AO coming up in, in a couple of weeks, at the AO meeting, the Academy of Osseo Integration, there's going to be a booth that I'm going to be at, and it's got a new dental implant that's coming out on the market. And this dental implant will be inserted with nearly zero insertion torque, but you will not be able to move this implant. So it will have incredible primary stability, probably some of the best primary stability of any implant that's ever been placed on the market, but the insertion torque will be zero. Let's call it zero for the argument. It might be five Newton centimeters, but let's call it zero. And you're going, how is that even possible? Come by the booth, we'll show you. But the, but the point is, is that we're not done evolving as a species, as an industry. And new things are coming. And the implants made simple method allows for that. So one of the things is, is one of the most important things is that you need to know what you're putting in the hole. And that's the implant design. And the implant design matters. It, it, it matters, okay? And so it, it, that is the principle. What that does is that frees us up that if a new implant comes along that's better, that's the one we use. So we didn't say the implant made simple method is predicated on using this implant, period. What we said is the implant made simple method is predicated on using the best implant that we can, that we can discern at this point in time. And, but at the moment we find a better implant, we evolve mm -hmm. and we move into that depth implant for the benefit of our patients so that they can have a better long lasting solution. And so that's the way I've set up my, my, uh, my implant made simple method is to be scalable and adjustable based on things that are coming in the future that we haven't even thought of. So it's, it's, 100% loyal to the principal and 0% loyal to a brand. That's exactly right. 100%. That's exactly how you should look at it. Which is which when you look to fundamental science, fundamental science doesn't change, right? Yeah. And that's what we that's what I tried to do when I developed this method uh, of doing implants. When I say made, the implants made simple, what I'm really saying is is that low risk and great outcomes. Okay? That that's when we say implants made simple. Uh, eliminating all of the all of the noise that surrounds dental implants, focusing on what's most important, making it easy, so that we have low risk and great outcomes, and those parameters are adaptable. Those core principles are adaptable because that's what a good scientist does. You don't lock yourself down and say this is how we're going to do it forever and ever and ever because that's a recipe for disaster. Because new things are going to come along that are going to be improvements and you want to take those into consideration. Absolutely. This has been another episode of Implants Made Simple. I'm Dr. Robert Stanley, Smile Engineer, out.